Hey guys and how you doing? Welcome back to an all new Cold Culture Automotive video and today we're doing an in-depth review of my new 2022 F-150 Lariat 5.0. Let's get into it. Okay, so right off the bat, I wanna start on the outside of the truck because that's the first thing people see. And when you're comparing this truck, especially to any other truck in the segment, I think the F-150s currently look the best. I think Rams look pretty good. Chevy's just not my flavor, but I think these F-150s look amazing and I got it in the race red. I mean, it's pretty obnoxious red. People either hate it or love it. Uh, most people love to see it, but would hate to own it type of thing. I love it. I think it looks really good with any sort of like black accent, anything like that. Um, sort of like how white does, but a lot more obnoxious than white, which makes sense. This is a, I'm a YouTuber. This is a YouTuber truck. I'm trying to be obnoxious. Um, so I can understand why you want to stick to your whites, your grays and your black trucks. Okay. Moving on, talking about the outside. One of my favorite things that I feel like gets overlooked and Ford has had this for a while is going to be this keypad outside the door. The reason why this is so awesome is when you go to a lake or a river or on a hike or anything where you're like kind of being active, you don't want to have your keys on you. First of all, they're kind of clunky in your pocket and you don't want to have that. Um, even when I'm going to the gym, it's nice to just keep those in the truck. Comment down below if you've left your keys at a gym before. I feel like that happens all the time. But having that keypad really allows you to just to throw your keys in there and forget about it. And I feel pretty safe with them being in there too. Um, obviously, I don't leave them in there overnight. I have to park on it in the driveway, not in the garage. So there is a fear of it like someone breaking in and just flat out stealing the truck. But just for like parking, going in somewhere for a couple hours, it's a pretty nice setup. Even for things like amusement parks, like Disneyland or Knott's Berry Farm or whatever amusement park near you, um, that's another thing. I hate bringing my keys in there, hearing them in my pocket or even throwing them in a backpack where they're just taking up space. Just leave them in the truck and forget about them. That is an awesome, awesome feature. Moving up to the front of the truck, I think Ford's headlight signature is great, especially when those LEDs come on. You can see it coming down the side. You have that C shape on both sides. I hated the way that the previous gen looked. I hated that kind of like an E look or maybe like a three look, depending on which side you're looking at. I hated that. I thought that was a very ugly headlight signature. And then the aftermarket headlights that came out for them also looked really ugly. These kind of remind me of the 2010 or like the 2012, like the first edition type of Raptor. These are what they remind me of. And I really, really like them. I think they're very simple. They're big, they're, they work really well. They've really brought up the road, especially when they come down to these right here. These are super duper nice to have and I appreciate them. Okay, sorry, I had to put a hat on. It got windy out here and I felt like my hair blowing around would be distracting. Anyway, so Ford, unlike some of the other brands out there, actually has a steel front bumper, which is really nice. It's not all steel, we have some plastic components right here but unlike the new tundra we also have front tow hooks and that is really nice to have something else that i'm going to have up front and maybe this is going to be different depending on what f-150 trim you get but the tremor the raptor and the fx4 all get that front skid plate which is really nice to kind of look at especially when the truck's lifted mine's obviously stock but to kind of see that curl underneath it looks very off-roady but it also really protects your truck currently i have this really ugly air dam and maybe i'll do a zoom in of that but i hate this air dam and i'm just ready to get rid of it but i'm probably going to do a full replacement bumper so i'm not in too much of a rush right there keeping the theme with the outside of the truck and moving into it for our first time i do have the legendary 5.0 v8 under this truck i've owned ford rangers in the past uh, 2019 and 2020 and those are both four bangers i was actually able to modify them to be pretty quick but it just didn't give you that v8 groan didn't give you so much of the pleasure of having a v8 even a 3.5 is significantly better than the normal four cylinder but i am so happy to be a part of like the coyote family and not only that this engine is is also extremely modifiable and i plan to supercharge this truck with a three liter whipple and guess what if you guys are excited to see that or want to see a truck go from stock to badass i'm basically turning this into a raptor r and it's going to be awesome so if you guys want to see that make sure you subscribe to be a part of the adventure i will do a lot of things with this truck go literally on adventures with it camping trips with it off-road trips with it maybe take it to like some waterfall spots stuff like that not quite today today's the review video but if you guys want to see that type of stuff make sure you subscribe now i want to talk about something that also has to do with right here in the engine bay and that's going to be cylinder deactivation i despise Buys cylinder deactivation. I mean, I absolutely hate it. I thought it was really dumb when Chevy put it in their trucks all those years ago, and I think it's extremely dumb that Ford is following suit. Now, it's not the exact same type of cylinder deactivation. The way Ford does it is a little bit better than the way Chevy does it, but that's like trying to choose between two evils. They both suck. Cylinder deactivation is a horrible, horrible thing. The Whipple will get rid of that, so I'm not too worried about it, but just on the little over a thousand miles I have in experience with this truck, 
when it goes into four cylinder mode, it really feels sluggish. I mean, this is a big ass truck to go to four cylinders. It just doesn't make sense. You could really feel the cylinder deactivation fight the driver. And I don't think that's a good thing to have. And it's definitely something to keep in mind when looking at getting a truck. The 3.5 and the power boost, which I have multiple power boosts on the channel um, that we actually own here on the channel. So if you wanna see more about a power boost, go check out those videos. I'll leave them in the link down below. They don't have cylinder deactivation. So if you still want an F-150, and matter of fact, those are a little bit faster, and uh, they're very tunable. They're not as modifiable, but they're very tunable. So if you want something like that, go check out those videos. But again, this is the 5.0, and that's my issue with it. Alrighty, so making our way into the inside of the vehicle, this is what it's gonna look like when you open the door. Those are my keys there. These right here don't come with the truck. I actually ordered these, uh, I believe they're called Cup Hero. I'll leave the link in the description down below to these as well. They're super cool. I got them color matched to the color of the outside of the truck and the inside of the truck. So it's kind of a cool contrast to see them go everywhere. Matter of fact, let's step in here a little bit more. Look at those huge screens. I love those screens. Step in here and again, you can see them all over. Really, really nice little trim piece to kind of class it up. I also have a, a matte screen protector right here. This is a 12 inch display fingerprints get all over it and i'm one of those people that eat in my car all the time and when you eat in the car all the time you got greasy fingers that's going to get everywhere and you may be asking why do you eat in your brand new truck all the time that's like a horrible thing to do well when you put down that shift knob and flip this out look you can already see it's used probably should have cleaned that before the video but oh well you could eat right here this interior work surface is seriously awesome and super convenient to have now let's turn this bad boy on because i do live in southern california and it is very hot in here. So again, you have this 12 inch display right here and another different type of 12 inch display right there. And you can see how many miles I have on the truck. Matter of fact, while we're here, let's find my gas mileage. There you go, 14.8 is what it says. Let's talk about why that is. 14.8, isn't the V8 rated for at least 19 MPG? Yes, it is, but I only basically drive in city traffic and I live in a very small town, a lot of stop signs, a lot of street lights, a lot of stop and go type of deal. Um, I'm rarely on the highways. Again, I just got this truck, it's a little over a month old. Um, I wanted to wait a little bit before I gave you guys a review. That's why it's like that. With only 1,270 miles, the gas mileage reader may also not be on point. I pump premium. When I pump all the way up, I have something close to 600 miles of range. Um, you're supposed to get like 705 or 702, um, something in that realm. I don't get anywhere near that. Now, is that the truck's issue or a Blake issue? That's a Blake issue. Again, I only drive in town and that's kind of how it works when you drive in town. Now, something you guys may have noticed is what is that brown everywhere in the interior? That kind of looks cool or you think it looks horrible. Either way, this is gonna be from the Sport Package. Now, the Sport Package is gonna give you color match front and rear bumper and this brown interior on the inside. It's gonna be right here in your center console. I think it looks nice and kind of classy. It's sort of like a football material, so it's kind of, <laughs> it's pretty cool. I can understand why some of you guys might not like the brown. I really wanted that matching front and rear bumper and the door handles and the mirror caps. Um, all of that together. I think one flat color looks really nice. It's kind of dumb for me, honestly, because I'm gonna be replacing both front and rear bumper eventually anyway, but at least my door handles will be color matched, I guess. And I have this cool brown interior. To me, it kind of reminds me of like 90s Porsche. No, yes, no, maybe. Let me know in the comments down below what it reminds you of. If it reminds you of a piece of crap, don't comment that. Um, <laughs> I don't care comment anything by the way i respond to all of my comments so if you comment down below want to have a conversation with me about the truck or literally about anything comment down below and i'll get back to you now you might be asking what does that little shiny piece mean well that right there means that i have the bang and olsen system you can also see it here on the door panels in the front and back as well and you get those little silver caps right there those tweeters up there and your a pillar now i have a whole video talking about the bang and olsen system and i really really enjoy it um, just to kind of give you a snippet, the base is really good. It also comes with a, I believe it's an eight inch sub in the back. The base is really good. Post Malone, wow type of base, you know what I mean? Especially from a stock truck. Now, I'm a young guy, but I also come from the era of once you got a car, the first thing you did was took it to like an audio shop and had them put in some new speakers and a sub or even a new stereo. The fact that we are long past that era is super, super nice to me. And to have this quality of sound in a stock vehicle is nice. Now, this is a Lariat, so it is higher up in trim, but you can option the B&O sound system for an XLT, which is the trim just below this. And I did not get the B&O Unleash system, which is gonna have the speakers in the headliner and in the headrest. The reason I didn't do that is, I don't really think the technology is there yet. 
and I don't want one of them to go out and have to take off a whole liner to fix it. I'm probably gonna do a lot of the mods to my truck and if anything breaks in my truck, I'm gonna be fixing it myself. Having to take off a whole headliner to fix one little speaker, it just seems dumb to me. And I don't want like the fuzzy sound right here. Now on the headrest, I think those are gonna be super expensive to replace if they do go out. I'm not saying they're gonna go out. Although I've heard a lot of negative things about the Unleashed system. I've heard that it kind of rattles your headliner or something like that. And I also know that it comes in like stereo mode and you want to put it in surround sound mode right away to get like the full effect of it. But for what I have in this truck here today, it is just the B&O system and it is amazing. I promise you won't regret it and you probably won't need anything more. Now let's talk about off-road goodies. Now I have two high, four high, for low and 4A. What is 4A? 4A is gonna be for auto. I love this feature. Let me tell you why. The reason why I love 4A so much is because when my girlfriend takes this truck in the rain or the snow or anything like that, I know that the system is gonna be fine. I know that she's not gonna unknowingly accidentally put it in four low trying to be on like a normal street or something like that. The 4A, it just takes care of all of it. It, it takes care of all the systems. It also integrates a braking system, which is really nice, but I'm gonna get into those modes later. 4A is really, really nice. And I'm not even talking about for like your wife or girlfriend or your kids. Maybe you don't have a lot of experience with any sort of off-road gearing or anything like that. Well, 4A is gonna be your best friend if you wanna do some light trail running or anything like that. I really, really like it and I love how simple it makes everything. But let's talk about what that middle button was. Right there in the center is gonna be your rear locker. And all you gotta do to activate it is just press it, hold it, and it'll lock your rear. I love the rear locker in Fords. I even love the front LSD that they have. The reason why I love them so much is if you've ever owned a Toyota or know of Toyotas or actually pretty much anything, the uh, ZR2 is like this as well. If you're on an incline or a decline or anything like that, you're not gonna be able to activate your locker. You're gonna have to move or roll forward or backwards. You're gonna have to do a lot of fidgeting around. This rear locker, as well as a four wheel drive system, will activate in any situation really well. And that is crucial to off-roading, which is what I plan to do with this truck. But that button also has another feature. This button is also a dial. It's got this really nice rubber grip on it. And you can see me moving it around. You're like, what is that doing? Well, let me show you. Right here, I'm in normal mode, but look at these amazing animations right here. This is unlike any other brand. Uh, the TRX has a little kind of picture thing that shows up, which is pretty cool. But this just really takes a cake. Look at the rain falling down. It's gonna put you in whatever mode is necessary. And because I have the FX4 package, I have one extra mode, which is gonna be rock crawl mode. Um, maybe we'll experiment with that later down the line. And if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe. Now the Larry also comes with heated and cooled seats. They're very, very nice. They're a little loud for filming and that's why I don't have them on right now but they are not the old type of system. They're actually a part of the AC system. So it's blowing the cold air like the AC down into your butt and back. I love this system. Again, I live in Southern California. It is hot all year long. And uh, having this, especially when you're able to just start up the truck real quick and then this comes on, you get in and it's nice and not hot, especially on this leather, it's really, really nice. Now I would go into the back seat and show you guys everything back there, but it's nothing you guys probably haven't seen before and I don't actually fit in the back seat. It may be because of the optional moonroof I got, but I don't fit back there. Um, I fit like wide wise, but headroom wise, I kind of have to hunch down. Now I am 6'5", almost 6'6", six, six, and about 300 pounds. I'm a big dude. And in that process, big dudes don't really fit in the back seats of any car. The Ram is definitely gonna have a bigger back seat, but I feel that the Ford has a bigger front seat. I feel like they allocate more space up front. I know that's kind of weird to say, but in Rams, um, I have a Ram in my family, a 2020 Ram in my family that I've driven often, and my knee touches the dash. And with, with my seat all the way back, my knee's up against the dash, um, right there where the transmission is. That is something to keep in mind, that if you're getting this truck and you have big kids, like six, five kids, maybe you're gonna wanna have to look at an Expedition or a Tahoe or something like that, because they're not gonna fit back there. This truck has incredible storage. That's where I keep my napkins, don't judge me. Baby wipes, if you don't use baby wipes you're a monster and then even in the center console right here um, I have a video talking about this wireless charging pad but if you pull these apart even down there it's just a bunch of bunch of space 
and uh, it's really, really nice to have. Not only that, Ford is out here for our 2A supporters because this is lockable. And yes, that might be for your wife's purse, but this also makes it a lockable storage container for a firearm if you choose to do so. There are so many cup holders in this truck. Let me count them real quick. Holy crap, there is 14 cup holders in this truck. <laughs> I am an American and I love my sodas, but how the heck would you ever fill up all those cup holders? They're really, really nice to have and really convenient. Something about this truck, honestly, is it has a good atmosphere, like almost like when you're looking at a house, like I know it's like kind of sounds dumb, but like the feng shui of a house, like the way things flow, it's very comfortable. This truck is very comfortable. It's very user friendly. It's very here for the driver in a lot, a lot of ways, especially for driver comforts and things like that. Let me show you one of those reasons why. Not just the USB plugs that are everywhere or the very usable features like that, but even having something like this up front, up front, I don't know any brand that has one up front, do you? Maybe they do and I don't know them, or maybe I just haven't looked into them. But to have one of these household type outlets up front is very, very convenient. Um, I don't know how many of us have ever used 12 volts anymore, probably nobody. But there's one of these in the back too. Super convenient for anything you need, maybe a laptop or whatever you need. Another amazing thing about this truck is gonna be the camera systems now. I got the full 360 package, so it's gonna give you all of these. You can see right into the bed. You can do this while you're driving, by the way. I'll show you that in a second. Um, you have an auxiliary camera that you can set up for a trailer. I'm thinking of doing that where I set it up underneath the truck for off-roading somehow. I'm not sure I'm going to do it yet. It's just an idea. Let me know what you think down below. This is going to be for your hitch, as you can see. And then last but not least, your rear view camera. Very clear camera. Very nice to have. Nice big screen for that. The other thing on my truck is you may be thinking, what is this knob for? This is your trailer backup assist and then trailer braking system. I will not be towing anytime soon with this truck, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not great at backing up a trailer. I haven't had to do it that much in my life. I'm sure this will come in handy for me, but as far as I understand, if you are good at backing up a trailer, you probably hate this because it's completely counterintuitive to you. So that's just another thing just to keep in mind. I will also put up a screenshot right here of everything that came on my truck, and then you could totally look over it, see what you want or don't want, and see how much it cost me. So the bed utility package is not included on these 2022s. Ford schemed us out of them, super duper annoying. The tie downs are extras that you have to buy, and so are the bed lighting. That was a standard on the previous Lariat for 2021. Why they did it, I don't know. Very, very frustrating. So a reason why I got the V8 truck in the first place is for the exhaust note. But the exhaust note in this truck really sucks and that is something I'm gonna have to fix very soon. Let's take a listen. Okay, so what did you think of that exhaust note? I still think it's way better than the blender of an exhaust note that those V6s have, but still not enough for me. What do you think? Let me know down below. The last option I got for my truck is gonna be this sunroof. Now, a lot of people hate it. A lot of people love it. I actually freaking love it. I think it is so premium. I think it is so nice to have. It really classes up the truck. It's really nice to have when you're just driving through like a city at night to look at buildings or while you're off-roading look up at the stars. It really helps with the atmosphere, especially all these big windows. It's almost like having a convertible, but who actually wants a convertible? You know what I mean? Also a fun tip I learned, if it is very hot inside of this truck, open this up, open up that back window, which is also super cool to have. But if you open up that back window and this, it literally sucks all the hot air out like immediately. Like you don't have to wait for it to like acclimate in here. No, just like drive 30 miles per hour and it'll suck all of it out. Super nice feature to have. I have a whole video talking about the moonroof and whether it's worth it or not, or whether it'll be worth it or not for you. So if you're more curious about that, make sure you check out that video. I'm gonna have a 10 things I love and 10 things I hate video coming out on this very soon. I'm also gonna have a video talking about cylinder deactivation. If you wanna hear anything more in depth about this truck, let me know down below and maybe I could throw it into those videos. Or if you're just curious to hear more about this truck, you'll definitely hear more about it in those videos what i hate about it and what i love about it Alrighty, hey if you made it to this point in the video make sure you subscribe and hey if this isn't your first time on my channel and this is like the third or fifth video you watch why aren't you subscribed yet you know it helps me out you don't have to hit the bell subscribing is free just do it and hey send this video to somebody who you think is interested in f-150 or is just interested in the channel all around remember this is going to be a long build channel and if you want to see more of that make sure you subscribe to see more hey i just want to say thank you guys for taking time out of your day to check out my video thank you so so much it means so much to me and if you comment down below i'll make sure i'll get back to you that is going to be it for today's video and i'll catch you next time peace